Well, hello everybody. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about getting lost and specifically how to avoid getting lost. Now, initially I was thinking about just sharing some different tactics and some different strategies for avoiding getting lost. And then I realized very quickly that getting lost very much is based on what you consider to be cheating. And what I mean by that is Minecraft is not a black and white game. You know, if you play Monopoly or you play chess, there are rules and if you do this, that is within the bounds, and if you do this, that's considered cheating. With Minecraft, it's not quite so simple. In Minecraft, you can go all the way from like creative mode, which is you can do anything you want, all the way to hardcore mode, which is kind of a real world analog. The thing that's cool is there is no right answer. This game is whatever you want it to be. So if you want to, you know, fly around and have any block whenever you want it, you can do that. If you want it so that the game is over, if you die, you can do that too. Myself, I like to play vanilla survival, meaning that I don't do a lot of tweaks to the game. You know, things like lava and drowning and mobs are dangerous, but I do take advantage of some of the um, tools that the game provides. So I'll break this into three categories. I'll start with the most um, liberal, so the, the creative mode stuff, how to avoid getting lost in creative mode, and then I'll move my way towards more of the hardcore experience. So if you're playing in a creative mode world, or if you don't consider anything cheating, then the most simple way to avoid getting lost is commands. So if I teleport myself, to coordinates negative 200, 100, 0, you'll notice I basically end up right back where we started. So commands, as long as you know where you're headed, are a really great way of getting back to where you want to be. The second option that is a little bit cheaty, but a lot of people do it, including myself, is using the debug screen. So if I press uh, function F3, I bring up this screen. And you'll notice over here on the left hand side, it will say my X, Y, Z coordinates. And so I can see uh, where I am. And so if I know I want to be at negative 200, I can head in that direction and you'll notice that number starts to get smaller. Uh, this is a really great way of getting around. And uh, it also tells you which direction you're facing. It also tells you the light levels, which is really, really handy for building. So. Is this cheating? I mean, yes and no. Yes, in the way that, you know, if you think about it, my little guy here on the screen somehow knows exactly what direction he's facing at all times and can even tell you basically his latitude and longitude just from feel. That's pretty superhuman when you think about it. But it is part of the game and it's not something that you have to hack or unlock. It's something, a tool that is available to us. And so, it takes away some of the challenge, but I don't really consider it cheating. But if you do consider that cheating, you could do something like a trail of torches. That's a much, much more realistic and honest way to kind of find your way back and forth. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these things can be hard to spot. So over there is a torch, and that torch over there is only about 40 blocks away. And you can see it's a little tricky to spot. If you haven't seen it yet, it's right there. And one way to remedy that is put it on top of something that contrasts a little bit. You can see that torch way over there. That torch is almost 100 blocks away. But because I put it on top of some diorite, which contrasts with the landscape a little bit, a little easier to, to spot. And so that way I only have to do a little uh, torch tower every 100 blocks or so. A little more advanced than just a torch trail is building like a, a pile of rocks or a cairn so that you can see it from even further and make it a little bit more permanent. They kind of look cool, I think, in your world as kind of a landmark. And so that makes it seem a little bit more permanent and much easier to spot. So assuming you have a few more resources than just stone and cobble, you can do a campfire. And if you put a hay bale underneath it, they are super easy to spot from really far away. The hay bale makes the smoke go even higher than a campfire smoke normally would. That campfire is 128 blocks away from where I'm standing right now, and you can see it's plainly visible. All of these tricks are applicable in the nether as well. The only thing I recommend with the nether is do use something like cobble because it stands out and it's blast proof. That way your guests won't be blowing up your uh, paths or your markers. 
If you're using netherrack for bridges or if you're just putting torches on the ground and a ghast comes along, you're going to get lost real quick. And the only other thing I recommend is just make sure stuff you do in the nether is fireproof because it is everywhere. Lava, fire, all that. I think a lot of people underestimate the usefulness of the compass. The compass is a great tool for getting around. And one thing that's really cool about it is you don't even really have to hold it. If it's in your hotbar down below, you can still see what direction your spawn is. And if you're kind of late game and you're like me where you didn't build it your spawn, you can use a compass on a lodestone and make the compass point to anything you want, which is really, really cool. Granted, these things are pretty expensive to make. If you have access to a compass, then you can also make a map and it's really hard to go wrong with a map. I fill this guy out here. There's our little mountain behind us and all of that. And if you put this into a cartography table and then expand it, you can see quite a lot more and the maps become pretty useful as far as navigating and getting around, seeing the lay of the land and all that. No matter how hardcore you like to go with the game, one thing that's really easy to do is get lost in caves. One popular trick with caving is always put your torches on the right hand side. And that way, as you're working your way along, you know which direction you came from. The danger in this, of course, is with a room of this size, I've only lit half of it up, and so when I come back through, there's likely going to be mobs in here again. My remedy for that is I always light the room up, and that way I know I won't have spawns if I come back through. And then what I do is I always turn right. So here I can go that way, or I can go this way. We're going to turn right. Once I get to a place where I can't go any further, something else that I will do, I'll just go ahead and close that off. That way I know I've been there. Don't have to close it all the way off so you can remember what was in there if there was some resources, but with a one high gap, you really don't have to worry about creepers or skeletons sneaking up on you. And I like to use a block like cobble because it almost never occurs naturally and I have lots of it. When you run into something like this, where I could go down here, I could go straight ahead, or I could go up, you just need to make a rule and stick to it. So if we're always turning right, then perhaps we're always going down. And that way we'll know where we've been, where we haven't. So once again, even though it's a little bit up and a little bit down, we're gonna stick to the right. And some of these can get a little confusing, you know, which way do I go? What do I call this left or right? Just got to sometimes make a call on it and just be consistent. And it's also okay to sometimes just call it and say, I'm not going to do this right now. And again, staying organized is really just the key. I find if you stay organized, you end up having a lot of happy accidents. So here you can see I've come back into that ravine that I didn't really want to tackle earlier. Oh, that's nice too. This never happens when I play in the real world. So here with the ravine, you know, we can go left or we could go right. If we stick to our rule of going right, you can see the light down there from where I've lit it up already. And I can cut this off whenever I want. You know, if it's dark, I haven't been there. But if it's light, I can just cruise right back through, confident that I've lit it up, there won't be any mobs, and I could find my way back out. I do the same thing in fortresses. I block off the ways that I've been so I can keep track of which way is the right way out. I will usually put the blocks on the third level here. That way, wither skeletons, I can see them and I can still access them, but they can't get to me. And that's what I've got for you today. It all goes back to that idea of what do you consider cheating? You know, if you're the type of person who has been relying on the debugging screen to find your way around, maybe try without. Maybe depend only on maps and torches and add a little bit more challenge to your game. Or if you're the type of person who plays hardcore all the time, maybe you might want to relax a little bit and see what's it like, you know, if you could focus a little bit more on building and that sort of thing rather than survival. Well, I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow along on the adventure. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.